for those who are joining us at home and around the world, this is the moment that you take out your pen and write these four C levels. And at the end of the day, you can be able to determine which level are you. Are you progressing? Are you stagnating? Are you mark timing? Or are you stepping forward to meet Jesus Christ to eternity? John chapter 1 in the morning from verse 17. The law was given through Moses, but Jesus came with grace and the truth. For you shall know the truth, and the truth will surely set you free. Now this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to have an interactive session. We only have 25 minutes to be able to learn the four steps of how to walk step by step with God and to be in eternity with them. That is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, together with a host of angels who are with them in heaven. Are we ready? Let's begin. The very first one. For you to be active in the work of God, what must happen first? My Bible tells me in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4, and I will read from the King James Version. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to the one hope. Amen. Let's look at the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. And then you'll tell me which is the most common denominator that appears in all these verses. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. The Bible is admonishing us to make worthy of our, to make our calling and election sure. Right? Make your calling and election sure. Let's look at Romans chapter 11 and verse 29. The Bible say, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. The calling of whom? The calling of God. Those three chapters we've read, what is the most common denominator that is coming through? Yes, the calling. Yes, the calling. Our very first level is the calling level. As a Christian, for you to know that you are moving ahead, you must receive a call from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. The Bible is telling us that we should walk worthy of our what? Of our calling. For you to make steps in this vineyard, number one, you must receive a call. So level number one is a calling level. As I said, let's make this an interactive session. I only have by 20 minutes. Now, from the Bible... Who was called by God before the work could begin? Let me see. Let me start from this side. Yes. Okay. From the Bible, we have uh, Saul. Saul was called. Eh? Uh huh. And his name was turned into Paul. Into Paul. Thank you. At the center. Abraham. Abraham. He was called, and later his name was. Was Abraham. Abraham. Let me come this side. The disciple. The 12 disciples, yeah. all the 12 or 11? They were 12. Yeah, they were 12 disciples. Yeah. They were called into the vineyard. But one of them was not called. One of them came voluntarily, right? Who was that? That was Judas. When he went to Jesus, Jesus told him, I know you've come. And what was the verse that Jesus read? The, the foxes have what? Have holes. The birds have nests. But the son of man has nowhere to put his, his head. Who else was called? Uh -huh. Who else was called? The Israelites. The children of Israel was, were called from Egypt to the promised land. Amen. Uh -huh. Lord. Lord. He was called to come out of where? Sodom, Sodom. and Gomorrah. Exactly. Who else was called? Moses. Moses, Moses. Excellent. Two more examples. We have Jonah. Jonah. And Jonah Elijah. was called to go and preach where? You never? Elijah. Elijah, Elijah. And Samson. Samson, yeah. Samson. Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Before God makes work with you in the vineyard, you must receive a call. So you must receive a what? A calling. 
After you received your calling, the step number two, you must be given some set of instruction. This instruction, we say they are the conditioning level. Call number, uh, level number one is calling. calling level. Level number two, Condition. conditioning level. Now, let's read bit, uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 7. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instructions. Right? There are several other verses that we can read, but let's move straight to our examples. Who was called and what were the instructions that they were given? Yes? The disciples were called and uh, they were instructed to spread the gospel to the generations. Amen. The 12 disciples of Jesus were called one by one. Simon, I will make you fishers of men. Matthew, leave those things and follow me. Come, follow me. So they were called. And they were told, you're going to spread the gospel to all the worlds. Starting with Samaria, Judea, and to all the worlds. Another person? Okay. Saul was called. Saul was called. And his name was changed to Paul. His name was changed to Paul. And he was given instruction to spread the word of God. Paul was told, I want you to work diligently for me. Go spread the gospel. Amen. Yes? Uh, Abraham was called. And the name was changed to Abraham. Uh -huh. And he was instructed to move from, to move with his family from their home Ur to a mm -hmm. new place. When God called Abraham and changed his name into Abraham, he was really given instruction. He was told what? Abraham, I want you to leave this place and go and settle to a place where I will show you. Abraham was like, oh my God. You are telling me to live here to a place where I do not know? But at your will, I will go. Instructions. By the way, somebody told me that the word Bible is an acronym of what? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Right? So if you do not have instruction on how to survive, you will never leave earth. True or false? Let's see two more examples. Who was called and given instructions? This side. Moses. Moses, Moses. What are the instructions? He was called and he was told to lead the Israelites from Egypt uh -huh. through the wilderness to the promised land. When Moses was called, he came very fast to where God was. And then he was told, wait a minute, Moses. Remove your shoes because the place where you are is a holy ground. Moses removed the shoes, followed the instructions. Instruction number two, I want to send you over to Egypt. But God, I'm a strong arm. Wait a minute. I'll give you somebody who will speak on your behalf. Moses, my Bible tells me that Moses was not a stammerer. Moses was one eloquent person. The only thing that he missed, he was in the wilderness too long until he forgot the language of the Egyptians. And therefore, he was given somebody who understood the language of the Egyptians. My fellow youth, the language that we have nowadays, can our parents understand? They can't. It is a twisted English and twisted Swahili. For example, one word that we've twisted, which one? Lakini. How do you, how do you make it in our language? Nikali. Eh? Something. We've twisted English and Swahili. Parents will never understand our generation. That was Moses. He was never a stammerer. He only took too long in the wilderness. So when you take time off, in the wilderness for too long, when you come back to the vineyard, you might forget some few things. But the Lord says, I'll give you somebody who understands the language. Uh -huh. One more example. Given instructions. Israel, Israelites were called. Uh -huh. Then they were given uh, the commandment. When the children of Israel were called from Egypt through the desert, they were given instructions. What? Ten commandments. Mm -hmm. Samson, right? Samson was, what, what are the instructions of Samson? The mother of Samson was told five things that Samson should not do. Number one, should not, not cut, cut his, his hair. hair. Uh -huh. Should not cut his hair. Number two, should not drink alcohol. Number three, should not marry from their, away from their community. Right? Number four, should not use the bone of an animal like carcass. Right? He was given five instructions. The mother was given five instructions for Samson. Now, level number one is which one? 
the calling level. Level number two? Conditioning. Conditioning level. So if you are in the God's vineyard, you must know what level are you at. Amazing grace. God will never leave you just to suffer like that. And he says you will never be given sin too big for you to handle or that has ever befallen man. Let's look at level number three. Level number three. Now, when you receive your calling, and number two, you have your instruction. Number three is not for everyone. Level number three is not for everyone, my brother and sister. Let's read and see. And see. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Just listen to this. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Is it a good thing? Is it scary? Is it something we can live with? Can we try? As Simon told Jesus, at your word I will obey, so shall we. Because the Lord is telling us, do not fear what you are about to suffer. You are going into level number, number three. James chapter one and verse 12. The Bible says, blessed is the man who perseveres under all trials. How many trials? all trials. For you to be in level number three, you must be able to persevere through all trials. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 16 to 24. I will paraphrase. At all times, carry faith as a shield. Right? At all times, carry faith as a shield. Not sometimes, not at some several times, but at all times. We are talking about the amazing grace, right? Level number one, calling level. Level number two, conditioning level. We are moving to level number three. Ephesians chapter six, verse 16. At all times carry faith as a shield. For with it, you are able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one. The Lord is telling us that we should be able to carry the faith as a shield because the devil is throwing darts at you every now and again. If you do not have the faith, you will not overcome the temptation of the evil one. Level number three is called the carrying on level. What did I say? The carrying on level. Level number one, calling level. Level number two, conditioning level. Level number three, carrying on level. This level, as I said, is not for everyone. Let's look at the examples. Who was called? What were the instructions? What were the conditions? And did they carry on or did, did they not carry on? Let me start from this side. Uh, okay. Paul was called. Paul was called. And the instruction he was given to stop persecuting the Christians. Sauli, Sauli. Bona one is Sauliti. His name was changed into Paul. He was sent to go out. Did he carry on? He carried on and mm -hmm. uh, he wrote so many books in the Bible. We are still reading up to date. Amen. When Saul was called, his name was turned into Paul. And therefore, for him to carry on, he wrote several books for us to read. Inspiration from God, given to Paul, and his name was changed from Saul. Who else carried on? Abraham carried on. Abraham carried on. Yeah, he was given an instruction to leave his home place yes. to a new place. Abraham is an interesting one. From the book of Genesis, chapter 12 to chapter 50, God is introducing himself as a God of three patriarchs. Who, who, and who? God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of whom? Jacob. Why? Was he not supposed to say God of Adam and Eve, God of uh, Nebuchadnezzar, God of John the Baptist, God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Why did God introduce himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These three patriarchs underwent a grave challenge in the book of Genesis for you and me. They were given a promise. For you, I will make a great nation. Level number three is not for everyone, as I say. Who was called? What were the conditions? And did they carry on? We've said Samson, he was given condition. Did he carry on? Did Samson carry on? No. No, he did not. Right. Jonah, did he carry on? No. No, he did not. Right? Now, if you do not carry on, there's another level altogether for you. 
Right? But let's first finish those who were called and they carried on and see who were called and did not carry on. Who was called and never and carried on? Um, uh, we have Elijah. Elijah. He was called to be a prophet. He was called to be a prophet. Um, he carried on that condition. He carried on the condition. And uh, later he was taken to heaven with the... Uh, before he was taken to heaven, Elijah cried and said, Oh Lord God, why have you left me alone? Elijah ran and hid somewhere, right? And then the Lord told him what? Elijah, you are not alone. There are many others like you somewhere. Don't worry, proceed on. God gave Elijah that full mandate to continue. And then he had to leave that jacket off for whom? For the one who was coming after him. For you to carry on it's not easy. One more person who was called and carried on. Uh, Lot was called. Lot was called. And given the instruction and also he carried on. Instruction was to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? He was supposed to go to where they will be sorted out. Who compromised there? His wife. Right? You will be called with your family but somebody in your family might just compromise. Not everybody you will be called with will stay. When Noah was called and he was told to build an ark, he was told to preach to every other person. How many eventually went into the ark? Noah and his family. Right? And some people helped him to build the ark up to the very last day when Noah was now calling them, you know what? We have finished this race. Come in. Ah, Noah, it has never rained. It has never rained, Noah. There'll be no rain. They stay away. Amen. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus was called from heaven to come and do what? And be an example for man that we can live a righteous life so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Eternal life. Was Jesus persecuted? Yes. Was he tempted by the devil? Yes. Was he crucified on the cross? Yes. Did he carry on? Yes. Level number three. For those who don't carry on. Level number one? Calling, calling level. Level number two? Conditioning level where you get the instruction. Level number three? Carrying on level. If you don't carry on, you have your level all the same. Your level is compromising level. Compromising is for those who do not want to carry instructions as they are being told. Number one, for example, Ananias and Sapphira, when they were called and they were told to go and sell what? Their land. Then bring the proceedings where? To the house of the Lord. What did they do? They did not bring 100%. They brought just a fraction of what they were told. Right? When the son of, when the, the priest, the pastor was asking them, have you brought your tithes and offerings? <laughs> so we only manage 50,000 and you've sold that to a million, right? They compromise. What happened to them? They die. Right? Who compromised again? We have Jonah. Jonah. He was called and uh, was told to go to Nineveh to preach. But instead, he went to Tarshish. Yes. Jonah was called, given instruction to go and preach on that direction. He said, no, I can't go there. He went the opposite direction. But the Lord himself is too smart for Jonah. He sent a whole fish to go and set Jonah back to his what? His course. There are those of us who will compromise. But because God loves you so much, he will still bring you back to your what? to your fold. A good example before I come this side, Moses. Moses, in as much as he was setting the children of Israel from their promised land to their, from Egypt to the promised land, he got, he was overcurried by his what? His anger. He died where? In the wilderness. But if you go to book of Jude, Jude verse 9, Jude verse 9, the Bible say, yes? And Michael did not do what? Yes? What did he say? Michael did not argue with the devil over the body of Moses. But Michael told him, the Lord rebuke you. Now imagine 
when uh, God sent Michael to go and get Moses to heaven, who was there first? Who was there first? The devil. So the devil, ameenda kwa kaburi ya nani? Ya Moses. Amekanyaga hivi. Anangoja Michael afike. Akamwambia aje. You don't deserve to take this man to heaven. No, he's a sinner. But the Lord said, the Lord rebuke you. He's my man. And that's why Moses was able to be there during the transfiguration with Elijah and Jesus. Amen. When God loves you, even if you fall and you are his person, you will see heaven. Bwana sifiwe. Two examples and then we close. Uh, I'm not so sure, but Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they were told you can eat of all these trees. Amen. But that one, don't dare touch. They touched it. They compromised. Even though they didn't die physically then, they died spiritually. Yes? Uh, Samson was not to reveal his, his strength and he was told to not to reveal the, about the shaving of the hair because it, it has the strength. And the man, he told his wife. Mm -hmm. Samson was told uh, that through your strength, you are going to liberate the children of Israel from the Philistine. But he compromised. He just permitted himself to be cheated by Delilah. His hair was cut, number one. He was given alcohol, he drank. On his way, he fought using the um, bones of a dead animal. So he compromised every instruction to which he was given. Samson fell. Inasmuch that later his strength came back, he said, God, just forgive me on this. Let me fulfill my mandate. He was given back his power. His hair became back. And then he also died well with the Philistine. He died there. The last person who compromised? Judas. Judah. Uh, he compromised because he betrayed Jesus. He compromised because he betrayed Jesus. Instead of going to repent the amazing grace, he went and hanged himself. My fellow young people, viewers at home and across the world, when temptation comes to you so strong, mental health is real. Don't take your life. Look unto the cross of Jesus. He has the grace to overcome your challenges. Your cells are configured to understand and appreciate the master. When you say that, Lord, here I am, your cells will not push you to suicide. Your cells will not push you to self-destruction. You own your life. Accept it and enter into the vineyard. Level number one? Calling, calling level. Level number two? Conditioning. conditioning level. Level number three? Carrying on. carrying on level. If you don't carry on, compromise. you compromise. If you compromise, you don't see level number four. Who can guess level number four? Let me read two verses. If you see it inside, raise up your hand. First Peter chapter five, verse four. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive unfading crown of glory. Amen. Revelation three, verse 11. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Level number one, calling level. Level number two, conditioning, conditioning level. Level number three, carrying on level. If you don't carry on, you do what? You compromise. If you compromise, you don't see level number four. So what is our level number four from those two verses? First Peter chapter five, verse four. When the chief shepherd appears, you will receive unfading crown of glory. Revelation 3, 11. Hold firm. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Four C levels of a Christian journey. Level number four? Crowning. Crowning level. Nikimaliza kazi nitavali shwataji. Amen. Level number four. As a Christian, you have four levels. Just look at your life. Where are you at this moment? Have you received a call? Have you received the conditions, the instructions? Are you walking in the fullness? The Bible says, arise and shine for your light has, has come. 
Is your light on the table or below the table? You are the salt of the earth. Your crown is waiting for you in heaven. Any questions before we pray? Any question this side? No question this side? And that side? No question. Amazing grace. When you give your life to Christ, your cells know that. If your cell does not appreciate Christ, you will suffer disease, right? When you suffer disease, you start to fight within yourself and you fall sick. But when you accept Christ as your savior, when you look at the cross, the cells will say, hey, wait a minute. He's having hope and hope eternal. Let's wait and see. You will not suffer disease because Christ has come to rescue you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.